The episode starts with Lucille visiting the Adventure Guild. As he walks in, people notice that he's a healer and they begin to criticize him. Lucille thinks it's because of his robe that everyone is staring at him. He then meets the Guild Master, who asks why Lucille is there. Lucille replies that he needs 10 barrels of Substance X. The Guild Master is shocked by this request, and suddenly, everyone is staring at Lucille for a different reason. The Guild Leader asks Lucille for a favor. Lucille wants to know what kind of favor it is. The Guild Master suggests that Lucille could help them as an healer, just like he did in Maritoni. However, Lucille declines, explaining that he currently works under the church headquarters. The Guild Master then proposes that they request his help as an adventurer. Lucille thinks it over and realizes that if there are adventurers in trouble, he should lend a hand, just as he promised in Maritoni. This way, he can also repay his master, Broad. The guild leader appreciates his willingness to assist and goes to fetch the Substance X for Lucille. Lucille asks what's happening, and Milty explains that recently, very high-level monsters have been appearing and hurting adventurers badly. This makes the teacher feel sad because adventurers are like family to him. Lucille asks why they don't go to a clinic. Milty gets upset and questions if Lucille expects them to pay one gold coin or be sold as slaves when they can't afford treatment for their injuries. She suggests that it's almost like enslaving them. The teacher returns to Lucille and asks if he will complete his request. Lucille informs him that it will cost one silver per person. Hearing this Milty and Guildmaster become emotional. The scene changes to a group of injured people. One guy tries to help them, saying they'll take them to the clinic. But the injured person refuses, saying they can't afford it and would rather die here. Surprisingly, Lucille and the Guildmaster enter the scene. People in the crowd become angry when they see Lucille, thinking he's a heartless healer. The people ask Lucille to leave to avoid getting harmed. This angers the Guildmaster, and he scolds the crowd, calling them foolish. Then, he introduces Lucille as the legendary hero for Maritoni, the Maso Zombie Healer. He says that Lucille's will help for just one silver piece. He tells anyone who objects to this leave right away. The hurt folks are really happy about this news because they think that if the famous healer, Maso Zombie, is here, they might all get better. They ask him to treat them quickly. However, Lucille tells them to be quiet and explains that he has three conditions. He doesn't want to take patients away from the regular clinics, so he can't treat them all the time. He also asks them not to cause any trouble or attack the clinics, even if they are expensive. Now, he shares his three conditions. First, he will only charge them one silver coin per person. Second, if anyone from the church, like the Pope, Valkyries, or himself, gets into trouble, they have to help him. And third, they should stop calling him names like Zombie and Masochist. The adventurers agree, and he starts the treatment. He chants a spell and uses Area Heal to heal all of them. Their wounds disappear, and they no longer feel any pain. The people thank Lucille and come up with new names for him, like Cheap Healer, Battle Crazed Healer, Weirdo Healer, and after a serious discussion, they settle on calling him Saint Weirdo. Lucille has no choice but to accept it. Lucille realized that adventurers weren't very good at coming up with names. The next morning, Lucille was with Catalia, and she asked why he was late. He explained that he had said goodbye to the Valkyries since they had helped him with his training. Lucille remembered how the crowd had suggested that the Valkyries should work harder, just like they had for Saint Weirdo the Healer. This surprised him because usually, crowds didn't do that for him. Catalia asked if Lucille planned to go into the labyrinth and if he'd come back at the usual time. Lucille told her that he was thinking of staying there for a while. Catalia got angry and didn't want him to do anything dangerous. Lucille assured her that he only came home to sleep and had plenty of food in his magic bag, so he'd be okay. He promised to visit her once a week and told her that his motto was to stay alive and not take unnecessary risks. Catalia was still upset that Lucille had only been gone for a short time and had already returned, but he reassured her that he was safe. Lucille mentioned that his internal clock was broken, and Catalia revealed that she had prepared new weapons, armor, and some magical items from the Pope. Lucille was delighted with his new knight's armor and praised it. Lumina also gave him an angel's pillow to help him sleep deeply and refresh for his adventures. The next day, Lucille decided to buy some food before heading back to the labyrinth. Lumina advised him not to overexert himself and to return within a week. Later, Lucille was talking with Guildmaster, who asked if it was the Saint Weirdo Healer's day off. Lucille was surprised and learned that he took a break because he had run out of a material called X and needed to get more. While they were talking, a group of young adventurers came in. These were the same adventurers Lucille had treated a few days ago during a recent battle. They were now healthy and wanted to join an upcoming exploration mission. They credited their recovery to Lucille and were grateful to him for saving them from near death. The adventurers informed the Guildmaster about their intention to join the expedition. They were in good shape now, and they attributed their survival to Lucille, whom they now called Saint Weirdo Healer. Lucille was happy about this development, and the Guildmaster told him that these young adventurers were eager to meet and fight alongside him. He also mentioned that the death rate had decreased significantly because these adventurers had trained hard, gaining strength and endurance. They had faced tough monsters and held their ground until the end. Then, a young man named Elite Stono with a band tied around his head entered. 
He thanked Lucille for healing his wounds in the past and asked about the physical enhancement skill Lucille had taught them. Lucille explained that he was still learning it himself because it was quite challenging. However, he demonstrated the skill by transforming his body into flames. Elites acknowledged it was impressive, but Lucille admitted he was only at level 1. Lucille felt encouraged by the conversation. Finally Melty entered and told Lucille that everyone was ready for treatment. The scene changes to Lucille in a room with injured and sick patients. Using his advanced medical knowledge, Lucille efficiently treated all of them at once, and it only took a few minutes. Everyone felt much better and showed their gratitude. Lucille then asked if any of them had heard news about the city of Maritoni or the Valkyries. A girl with brown hair raised her hand and said she had heard that all the Valkyries were safe. Another girl mentioned hearing about some deaths among the beast creatures. Then, a man raised his hand and shared information about Maritoni. He had heard that a storm had gone out of control and was taking adventurers, pulling them into its training hall. Lucille couldn't help but think of his teacher, Broad. The man continued his story, saying that Broad had been focusing on one student, but that student had left. Now, Broad was making the other adventurers undergo tough training. Lucille realized they were indeed talking about Teacher Brood. The man also mentioned a bear cook named Galgersan, who made everyone drink something called Substance X and created new recipes using it for people to eat. They also talked about hearing that the receptionist at the Adventurers Guild was going to get married soon. This news shocked Lucille, and he rushed toward the person who had mentioned it. He grabbed the person's shoulders and begged for more information. However, the other person admitted that he didn't know the exact details and had only heard about it. Lucille's behavior became increasingly strange as he was clearly upset by the news, especially since he had feelings for one of the girls mentioned. Six months later, Lucille defeated the leader on the 20th floor and also took care of some zombies thanks to his tough training. Then, he managed to defeat the leader on the 30th floor. After all this, he went to the Adventurer's Guild, where a girl was really happy to see him. She gave him a card and praised him, saying he did an excellent job, and he got 426,000 points for it. With those points, he could buy more clothes and use magic potions. Lucille also mentioned that his magical bag could expand as needed, which surprised the girl. She found it hard to believe that someone so young could do all this and even accused him of lying, saying he didn't know how to use healing magic. Then Catalia, another person at the guild, brought Lucille to see the Pope. The Pope asked to see the drug he'd been using. Lucille remembered Substance X and took it out of his magical bag. The smell was strong, and it made the people around him worried, thinking it might be toxic. Lucille explained that it wasn't poison but something given in the Adventurer's Guild. It was created by using magic on a special substance made by a wise person. The Pope was really surprised to hear that this substance was in the Adventurer's Guild and asked what it was called. Lucille told her it's called Substance X, and they make new adventurers eat it. The Pope explained that Substance X was made to awaken hidden talents in people. It's made from a mix of herbs, a dragon's heart, and spiritual water, all mixed into a tablet. A wise person created a magical tool to make more of it whenever needed, but it turned into a liquid form. The liquid version was so bad that they changed its name. The Pope believed that it was called Substance X when it was in tablet form, but they changed the name to God's Lament because the liquid version was so terrible. Lucille told the Pope that Substance X tasted really awful, but he used to have three tablets of it every day after eating for two and a half years. He said that life in this world was tough, and he did what he could to survive. Half a year later, Lucille defeated the leader of the 20th floor in the labyrinth. He mentioned that there were no side effects to consuming Substance X and that it only made him stronger. The Pope was amazed by Lucille's ability to consume such a disgusting substance and recognized his efforts and determination. The Pope then asked Lucille about the monsters he faced this time. Lucille told her about three whites and five ghost knights who initially gave him trouble, but he managed to defeat them in the end by using high-level recovery magic. The Pope was astonished that he could use this kind of magic at such a young age and thought he might become a sage someday. She asked him to bring her the items that fell from the monsters. Next day Lucille met the receptionist, Catalia, and greeted her with a good morning. She handed him a letter from the Pope, explaining that it contained details about Substance X. Lucille thanked her and mentioned that he would read it later in the maze. However, Catalia called out to him as he left and wished him luck, assuring him that she would be there for him if he ever faced challenging times. Lucille expressed his gratitude for her kind words. In the maze, Lucille read the letter from the Pope, which stated that it contained observations about Substance X in humans. It mentioned that humans have three primary primal desires, the desire for sleep, food, and sex, but these desires are often suppressed in those who dedicate themselves to the church. The Pope believed that Substance X could potentially rekindle the joy of life by amplifying these primal desires. The letter also mentioned some unexpected side effects of Substance X, including its ability to carry the essence of various diseases and regenerate cells during sleep, facilitating skill growth. Lucille was amazed by the remarkable properties of Substance X and continued reading the letter. 
The Pope explained that there was a significant backlash due to the foul odor of substance X, which was deemed inappropriate for the church. Sage asked the Adventurers Guild if he could leave some substance X with them so it would be available for curious beginners who might want to try it, hoping that substance X might one day become a tool that could save the world. Lucille continued reading the letter, which detailed the results of a study on the effects of Substance X. Lucille realized that Substance X had amplified his desire for food and sleep but had completely suppressed his sexual desire. This revelation shocked and saddened him, and he covered his face with the letter, feeling embarrassed. He wondered if Catalia's sympathy might have been due to this perceived inadequacy. Despite the world being full of beautiful women, he had never felt any sexual attraction towards them. Despite these feelings, he suddenly ignited with enthusiasm and began his training battling monsters one after another. He did it all for his future and remained determined, even though he had never received any responses to his messages. This bring an end to our episode 10. If you enjoyed it then don't forget to subscribe our channel.